In the last episode, I was chasing Triple Tail with my good friend and our sponsor, Brad Parker. He hand builds every one of the rods that we use. This episode, more Triple Tail. We caught so many that day, we couldn't cram it into one episode for you. Y'all stay tuned. The Fisherman's Guide brought to you by the Silver Slipper Casino. Today's episode, sponsored by Dad Super Pump, Southern Building Supply, The Hook, Gulf Coast Cuisine, Oddball Tackle, Cedar Swamp Outfitters, Ocean Marine, Sports Trail Trailers, Sportsman Marine, Parker Poles, and Sport Optics. There he is. He's looking at it. There he is. Fish on. He's coming right to the boat, like walking a dog on a leash. There he goes. You ready, Mr. Parker? Bring him on in. There he is. Just like that. We got a fish. What's that, four today so far? That's it. Been out here for about an hour. I got it. All right. See if I can get the hook out of him. Why don't you go ahead and get that tagging kit out? Now with these fish, especially if I'm tagging them and releasing them, if the hook is down really deep, a lot of times it's better to just cut the line and leave the hook there because that hook will rust out in a day or two. That one was right in the side of the mouth, so we went ahead and took it out. You don't want to hurt these fish whenever you tag them. You got me a tag ready? Yes, sir. Because you want them to live. start with the belly towards us, nose against the board. Again, we got 16 and a 16th. Same area right here, right behind the start of the fin. Knock your scale or two off. And we're gonna stick that thing over, insert it, twist it, pull it out, and we got a tag fish. Get this little guy right back in the water. Try to. Tip brought to you by Dad Super Fun. Once again, we got our good buddy John Falkman here. You know, one of my favorite things in trout fishing is feel that little tick on the end of the line whenever you're fishing a jig. There's a lot of people out there that don't know how to properly rig them. Here at the Fisherman's Guide, we like all of you, whether you're a beginner or a tournament angler. But we're going to talk about some basics here. John, what do we got? And we've seen them all hooked backwards, upside down like this too far in where the hook's running too deep, too shallow where it's just running and it's just not consistent with the regular lot of the bait itself. And then you got your true hook set. So this is the way you really want to rig them. And Ronnie, you know how, how we do it here. Basically, we just push it in that center right there and we just push that plastic just so it starts to turn about that 90, pull it out that middle right there and push it down onto your lure, pull it back and make it straight. What you wanna make sure is you've got a good straight profile. You don't want this thing kinked up, curled up. Whenever it's swimming through that water, you want it to look as natural as possible. Make sure your tail's got plenty of room to move, make plenty of action. Those fish are gonna key in on that vibration. It's there for a reason. I'm sure this wouldn't work at all, right? Hey, I'll tell you what, <laughs> you catch them so good, you could probably get them on that. Well, you know, we'll, uh, we'll leave that for another episode. 
John, thanks for coming out. Y'all stick around. We're gonna get back after catching some more fish right after this. Come on down to the Silver Slipper. Hi, this is John from the Silver Slipper, where the casino action is always lively and fun. Now you already know that we're passionate about our food. And I'm sure you'll be able to find your favorite table game in the newest slot games available whenever you visit us. So now we're happy to introduce our beautiful new beachside hotel with 129 spacious rooms and suites. So for great fun, food, and awesome views, come on down to the Silver Slipper. Pass a good time at the Silver Slipper. Hey y'all, I'm Corey Hudson, owner of Hook Gulf Coast Cuisine. We're located on Davis Avenue, right here in Pass Christiane. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and be prepared to get hooked on Hook Gulf Coast Cuisine. For over 80 years, serious anglers have depended on Penn. You can too. When you get that bite of a lifetime, be confident knowing that Penn is with you. Penn, let the battle begin. When it comes to boating, most folks want more features for less cost. And that's what Sportsman Boats is all about. With yacht caliber components, the Sportsman Boats lineup offers bay boats, center consoles, plus tournament class and open cockpit models. To find the perfect fishing machine that puts your family first, contact your nearest Sportsman Boats dealer and discover that with a Sportsman Boat, you can have it all. Man, great fish. Man, that was awesome. Now, Ryan, I got a question. What's that? We're running pretty close to a lot of these crab traps looking for these things. Do they not spook very easily or? Brad, what I've found with these fish is whenever you're running, which I generally run anywhere from about 26 to 34 miles an hour, depending on what the water conditions will let me see. As long as that splash coming off your boat doesn't land directly on top of that fish, even if they go down, they're gonna come right back up. So the wake, not necessarily as important, but the splash on them. These fish are used to crab boats running by, checking the traps, fishermen running by, blowing past them. They're used to the wake. As long as you don't get close enough and land that splash on them nine times out of 10, unless it's just a day where they're all real finicky, they're gonna stay up and you're gonna have a shot at them. Well, sounds like a good deal. I see a lot of guys, one thing you don't want to do, folks, there's not a fish out here worth dying for. I see a lot of guys running, and they'll have a guy standing on the bow of the boat. Now, what happens if you bump something? He's going swimming. And if he goes swimming up there, the next thing he's going to meet is that prop. Uh, It'll kill you. You got to be safe on this water. That prop is nothing to play with. Don't get up on the bow of the boat whenever you're running, ever, for any reason. Stay down on the inside. You can see these fish. Once you're up on a plane, you can see them. If they're up top and they're willing to feed, you're gonna see them from inside the boat. Don't risk your life, because you're gonna ruin the day. You're gonna ruin your family's day. Be safe while you're out here. Keep an eye on what you got going on, and don't ever operate your boat faster than you can control it. All right, this is what you don't want to do. Cover the trap up with the spray. Now we're going to pass one the right way. Trap is just outside of the spray. People always ask me, should I use live bait for triple tail? Well, let me put it to you this way. If you're going to spend a lot of time, a lot of hours on your motor, a lot of money and fuel in running around looking for these things, why wouldn't you put yourself in the best position to hook up and land one? Yeah, we catch them on artificial. It can be done. Any fish can be caught on artificial. But a live shrimp is the closest you're going to get to a sure thing. Pick you up two or three dozen, get out there, and have a good time. Yes. Got him. There we go. Oh, Mr. Three Tail. There 
There you go. I don't know if he's gonna be legal either. He's gonna be close. He's good size. Set him in this pocket right here. Triple tail are somewhat of a mysterious fish. Not everybody knows a whole lot about them, but I tell people they look like a big black crappie. These fish generally show up once the water temperature gets up around 70 degrees, and they leave whenever it gets back down to that. They like to hang out under anything that's floating. Anything providing shade, they'll lay on their side just under the surface. That's part of what makes them so much fun to catch. You can ride along till you see one, circle back, pitch a bait to them, watch them eat that bait, set the hook, hey, and you better hang on because it's fixing to get real. Go. Off he goes. Y'all stick around. We're going to get back on some more triple tail action. Hey, I'm Captain Ronnie Daniels with Fisherman's Guide. Today we're here at Cedar Swamp. This is a store that carries what catches fish. For your next outing, freshwater, saltwater, inshore or offshore, Cedar Swamp's got the gear that works. Building a new home? Build it with brick and roofing from Southern Building Supply. Come see our showroom on County Farm Road in Gulfport. We have a wide range of brick in the most popular styles and colors, and our selection of high-quality shingles can add years to the life of your new roof. Southern Building Supply offers on-site delivery of your new brick and rooftop delivery of your new shingles. We're the only locally owned roofing and brick company. Call us today, 228-539-8380. Southern Building Supply. Come on down to the Silver Slipper. Hi, this is John from the Silver Slipper, where the casino action is always lively and fun. Now you already know that we're passionate about our food, and I'm sure you'll be able to find your favorite table game in the newest slot games available whenever you visit us. So now we're happy to introduce our beautiful new beachside hotel with 129 spacious rooms and suites, so for great fun, food, and awesome views, come on down to the Silver Slipper. Pass a good time at the Silver Slipper. Just like money in your pocket, that's super fun. When you trade with us, you always get a better. When it comes to boating, most folks want more features for less cost. And that's what Sportsman Boats is all about. With yacht caliber components, the Sportsman Boats lineup offers bay boats, center consoles, plus tournament class and open cockpit models. To find the perfect fishing machine that puts your family first, contact your nearest Sportsman Boats dealer and discover that with a Sportsman Boat, you can have it all. Brad just learned a valuable tip for tagging. And anybody who starts doing this will figure it out pretty quick. Whenever you start pulling your tags out of your book, always start with the last one because then you have a flat surface to write on. If you start with the first one, all these tags are in there and it's hard to write on your stuff. Little small tips that make life easier on the water. He's on the back side of it, see him? Yep. That's a good fish, too. There's two of them. He's got it, stick him. There you go. Drag him out that way and we'll get the other one, too. The other one's still there. Yep. I know you don't want this boat anywhere around you. 
I'm on some. He can't decide which way he wants to go. There we go. There we go. Hold this. Hold this. Gotcha. There's a shrimp on that cork. Trouble, baby. There's another one. Can you get that one off of the hook? Yeah. That's gonna be a legal fish, so let's just go ahead and set him in the boat. You need my pliers? If you don't mind, let me you come get them. You think we can get three? Are we that lucky? Uh, something needs to. We've had, we ran out all of our bad luck. That's it. Come here, son. Yeah, I know it. This right here, folks, is what it's all about. Now we got a third fish under that grass. Is that fish out of the net? Not yet, but he's about to be. All right, just leave him in the bottom here. Here, I'll get him, go get you a shrimp. All right. There we go. <clears throat> yes, we'll see. Oh yeah. Okay. All right, and. So what happened here, we were running across, headed to our next set of crab traps. We spotted a couple old crab traps that had been lost or left behind out here. Pulled up on those, every one of them had a fish. We didn't catch every one of them. But while we were fighting one of those fish, I saw a big piece of grass come floating by. There was a fish under it. So we got to looking, there's patches of broken grass all over out here. Right now, we're, we're chasing these fish down on nothing but the trolling motor. Just about every patch of grass floating through here right now has got at least one triple tail under it. The last one had three. So you gotta look for everything in the water. Don't pass anything up. You always wanna check it. Triple tail, they move around a lot. Yep, every now and then, you may see the same fish in the same area for more than a couple days. One thing we do know, they all leave during the winter. A lot of them will return back to the same area. But recently, USM had a recapture report of a fish that was tagged in the Mississippi Sound last year and recaptured this year all the way in West Matagorda Bay, Texas. So they are movers. They will travel. But for the most part, season to season, this year, the fish that I'm catching right here, they're probably going to stay right here for the majority of the summer. Okay, I see him right there? Yeah. Go ahead and get it to him. There you go. Reel it up top. Reel it, reel it, reel it. Drop it. All right, he's after it. He's going, no, 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 don't pay attention. I think he came back up on the other. He's on. There you go. There you go. Woo, jumper. I'm making sure that hook's set this time. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think I'm not messing with speckle trout. These fish got real mouths, huh? That's it. Man, I think it is safe to say, Brad, that we are on them. I'm talking about a fun day. Lift him up here. Come here, little fish. There we yeah. go. Yeah, baby. Uh, that one looks pretty close to legal, he's, doesn't it? He's close. I don't know. We're going to find out, though. He's real close. Look how pretty and dark colored that fish is. 
We got an assortment of setups, rods, and reels here. On that fish, we were using a 7-2 Parker Pole Fisherman Inshore Series. We've got a Pin Clash 3000 on here. Whenever I head out triple tail fishing, I like to have three different setups. This is a free line. 40 pound fluorocarbon spliced to my main line. I put a little split shot about a foot above the shrimp. And then of course the number eight treble hook. We've got the dark colored hook. We also rig up a popping cork with about a 12 to 18 inch leader for some of the ones that are on top. And then we'll rig a popping cork that's about three foot deep for whenever we're fishing. He doesn't like where we got him laying. A little chilly. Yeah. There he is. Woo! Look, there goes the shrimp. He's like, I made it. I got free. There we go. That's a keeper. That's a good fish. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. That one is dinner. That's got some weight to him. You can feel him in the net. Oh yeah. Brad Parker, Parker's Poles. This is the man that makes my weapons for fish destruction. He builds every one of our rods. We're going to get this one on ice. Y'all stick around because we'll be right back. Hey y'all, I'm Corey Hudson, owner of Hook Gulf Coast Cuisine. We're located on Davis Avenue right here in Pass Christian. Welcome. Mm, that is fantastic. Okay. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and be prepared to get hooked on Hook Gulf Coast Cuisine. Hey guys, Chef Corey Hudson here at Hook Gulf Coast Cuisine. Today we're going to be doing Red Snapper Mornay. We're gonna grill a beautiful filet of fresh red snapper. It doesn't get much better than this. And we're gonna to top it with a crab meat Mornay sauce. That's a dish that is used in New Orleans a lot. So I believe that it's a Creole dish. Um, it's a decadent mixture of jumbo lump, fresh Gulf Coast crab meat, and a blend of Swiss cheese and Parmesan. Now I'm gonna grill this red snapper on our char grill here. It gives it a lot more flavor than regular just putting it on a flat top grill. I'm just gonna season it with just salt and pepper and a little bit of olive oil so it doesn't stick. And basically the fish has all the flavor itself. Like I've said before in these shows, the trout, the red snapper, the triple tail, they have so much flavor on their own so you don't need a lot of seasoning on these fish. Now we're gonna start here with a medium sized saucepan. We're gonna put about two tablespoons of olive oil then we're going to add one teaspoon of minced garlic, one teaspoon of minced shallot, and just like everything else, we're going to saute that, add a little pinch of all-purpose flour just to thicken this sauce up a little bit. And once that comes together, we're going to add two cups of heavy cream. And once that starts to reduce, we're going to add our Swiss cheese. And once we need to thicken up a little bit more, we're going to add a slurry from cornstarch and water. Now this sauce is a sweet cream sauce with a hint of heat. And what gives it that heat is gonna be one drop of crab boil and a pinch of cayenne pepper. Now we're gonna plate this snapper Mornay. We're gonna take this beautiful filet of red snapper, put it on the plate, and we're gonna to top it with this jumbo lump crab meat Mornay. Hey y'all, I'm Corey Hudson, owner of Hook Gulf Coast Cuisine. We're located on Davis Avenue, right here in Pass Christian. Welcome. Don't forget to 
like us on Facebook, and be prepared to get hooked on Hook Gulf Coast Cuisine. Triple tail are one of my top three favorite fish that our Mississippi Gulf waters have to offer. They're great any way you want to cook them. And hey, you got to admit, anything rolled in Louisiana brand fish fry and dropped into grease is going to come out pretty good. But I don't like overpowering the flavor of these fish. I generally prefer to put mine on the grill. They're very hearty. They hold up very well to the grill. I lightly marinate them, put a little bit of seasoning on them, a little butter, cook them till they start flaking up a little bit. And I tell you what, that's one of the finest meals you're going to pull out of these Gulf waters. Hey, we had a great day of triple tail fishing. Now we're going to clean one, get it ready to eat. We're going to start off with a tub full of ice water, put our fillets in. We're going to take this fish, make a cut right behind the gills. This is a serrated blade Dexter fillet knife. Then we're going to work right down through here. Once you get it started, you can lay that knife all the way in there and run down. Once you go all the way down, you just work it right back up to the head all the way up to the backbone. Now you don't want to take this side off yet. Go ahead and leave it on there. Roll the fish over and do this side the same way. That way you can make a good cut. Makes it easier to clean the both sides of the fish. Get him started. And then we're gonna lay that knife down. Come right on down the back. Once we get it down, we're just gonna roll this meat right off. Serrated blade knife is very important on these triple tail or redfish. Once we get it there, the rib cage comes right through here. So we're gonna lay that knife in, pull it right there, just like that. Cut this, get that meat out of there. And there you are, you got a nice fillet. And we're gonna put it there. We're gonna to go to our regular knife. I like to take it off in two steaks. There. Spin that around. Bring it right on down. Now you've got two perfect portions for the grill. Easy way of cleaning triple tail, and that's going to make a fine dinner. The Fisherman's Guide brought to you by the Silver Slipper Casino. Today's episode sponsored by Dad Super Bowl. Southern Building Supply, The Hook, Gulf Coast Cuisine, Oddball Tackle, Cedar Swamp Outfitters, Ocean Marine, Sports Trail Trailers, Sportsman Marine, Parker Poles, and Sport Optics.